Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Gadir, and thank you for joining me for another episode of The Fertile Life. I am very, very excited. One of my favorite people, Lori Bregman, is here today, and I am very excited because Lori has a very insightful way of talking about things that have to do with her field, and she brings this unbelievable energy to everything she does. I'm going to give you this opportunity, Lori, to say hi and also introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm a doula. My name is Lori Bregman. I'm a doula. I'm also the author of The Mindful Mom to Be, Mama Stay, and The Doula Deck. Um, I've been a doula for 22 years, and um, I'm incredibly passionate about helping birth healthy mothers and healthy babies. That's wonderful. And for those of you who don't know exactly what a doula is, a doula is a birthing coach. Um, Lori does a lot more than just coach people during birth. She actually coaches people from before they are even thinking about getting pregnant, during their pregnancy, and even afterwards. And that's why I say she's very insightful and does things in a very unique way, because I really absolutely love what she has done for many of my patients, what she brings to the table, and most importantly, the energy that she brings it, because she does it flawlessly with this unbelievable way of making people feel comfortable comfortable and getting their mind and soul and spirit all in the right place. I want you to kind of tell everyone how your job kind of evolved to being what you do and how you do it and why everyone loves having you as part of their delivery journey. Um, I always was drawn to working with pregnant women and, um, and children and fertility and, and, you know, uh, babies and uh, everything I learned I kept gearing it towards pregnancy. So when I did body work and massage, I would gear it towards prenatal. I specialized in that. And I took my doula training and then I learned yoga and mindfulness and spiritual coaching. And I just kept thinking, how can I gear this towards pregnancy? So I kind of just use all the different modalities in my practice to, you know, I do believe the, the, the healthier and uh, calmer and more peace the, the, the mama feels or, you know, the, the baby feels inside. Um, and also that goes with fertility when you're trying to get pregnant stress, as you know, cause you tell your clients this all the time, it wreaks such havoc on the body and can really, you know, tamper with fertility. So keeping, you know, um, a good positive attitude when sometimes things can be challenging and, you know, practicing some mindful practices and, and having a different mindset helps so much in that. Oh, and you do such a good job bringing people. Um, so as everyone knows, I'm a fertility specialist and I concentrate on helping patients get pregnant. And Lori has jumped in very early on. I have had her coach people through the process of trying to get their mind, their body, everything involved in trying to get them ready for being um, a mama, a, a fantastic mama with a beautiful, healthy baby growing in front of them and inside of them. So one of the things she does is with techniques of visualization. And by the way, when you said what you were saying last, it reminded me of one of the best massages I've ever gotten. Thank you very much. I forgot how good oh. they were. <laughs> very yeah, overdue. So good. I'm not as good anymore at massaging as I used to be. But <laughs> Well, I think your true talents came out. You're, you have unbelievable hands, but I think more important, the reason you have unbelievable hands is because you have unbelievable energy. Um, and that's something that not everyone has. So the fact that Lori is able to bring her energy to the table and take someone who is emotionally weak and brittle and not in a place that they can really put their 100% there and have them bring out more than 100% is really special. I, I want you to talk about the technique that you have, and I'm lucky because you've worked with so many of my patients, but how you put things into a box, things that you have to deal with, things that you don't want to really necessarily be dealing with and how you bring them to the table, and you kind of just force people to get past that and into a better place in life. Um. Well, with fertility, uh, you know, it depends on who I'm working with. I kind of, I, I think the reason I've been really successful is I build really strong relationships with my clients and take the time to really get to know them and the way they operate. Um, with fertility, what I find a lot is there's a, sometimes a belief system or a block that, you know, if, if it's not something going on, which you would find like medically or, or, you know, there's like egg, egg quality or sperm quality or something going on 
But if sometimes there's like blocks, a belief system. Um, and I found sometimes through, I do this kind of, it, it's, I don't even know what it's called, but I do restorative and chakra and yin yoga and breath work. And we just do a coaching session first and just talk. And then we move it through the body. And then I bring the person inside to see if anything's kind of blocking um, a belief system. And a lot of times things will come up like one girl said to me, she tried for three years to get pregnant. And she said, um, and she was going in for, for her like third fertility treatment. And she said, she opened her eyes and she said, oh my God, I feel that if I don't get pregnant, my husband's going to leave me. And um, we worked on that. And she went home and talked to him and said, he, they had a big talk about it. And he's like, I'll never leave you. And just that pressure alone that she was putting on herself, shut her down. That's a lot of pressure to put on some, yourself. I, you know? I, I think the mental pressures that women who are trying to conceive put on themselves sometimes, not always, but sometimes are one of the most inhibiting reasons why they can't conceive. And I'm so glad that you said that because if there's a thought like that that you have, you need to get through that. You need to get beyond that. You need to get into a better place before you can achieve your goal because thinking things like that is just not a good idea. When I do yeah. my consultations with patients, and this is the strangest thing, in the last year and a half that 99% of my consultations have become by phone, I think people are more comfortable at home in their bedroom, in their living room, talking to me on a phone. And people, I feel, are really opening up more, telling me the truth about a lot of things that are happening versus if they're uncomfortable and nervous sitting in my office right in front of me walking into a big clinic. And for that reason, I think this has brought this to the next level. So people are really comfortable. Second of all is that I tell my patients, if we can't get you into an emotional state that you trust me, you can confide in me, you love my nurses, you love my team, and we are, you know that we are there for you, we can't get you there. The emotional aspect of this entire process is so heavy and can take such a toll on you and put you into such a dark place that if you're not there 100% and know emotionally, along with the physically, that you can do this, it's almost impossible to sometimes get yourself there. So I love that you address that, and I love that you address that really, really early on. Yeah, it's so important. I had another client who uh, she, she was, what came up for her was, I'm terrified if I got pregnant of my relationship turning into my parents' relationship. And um, because they had this beautiful, apparently her parents had this beautiful relationship. And, and then when they had kids, everything fell apart. So she was terrified of that. And she, you know, it's kind of this thing that it comes up and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm feeling this. And then I had her just do some work. And then she talked to her her, her partner and released it and went to your, actually went into your, where you, your clinic and was like, I got to go pick up my baby. And it was a very different attitude than before. And, you know, she got pregnant and I was her doula and she had a little boy. Um, so yeah, the emotional part, it, it, beca it can become the elephant in the room, which is like, it's this thing that overtakes your life when you're going through fertility. Um, it's like there's, it squashes out all the energy around you. And, and sometimes you and your partner might get lost in that. It, it, it takes away from intimacy. It takes away from all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, just kind of reconnecting them with life sometimes outside of that and integrating themselves back into that process. And also it's really hard when your body was made to do something and it's not doing what you want it to do which is get pregnant and it can play on your, uh, self, self esteem, your self worth. It can play on your confidence. It plays, um, it, and you start spiraling like a domino effect. So it's like, it's kind of like getting you back into that good place, I think is really, really, really important. You know, just sitting here, I had an idea. I think that yeah. you should do a once or twice a year seminar for women that are 30 years of age that have nothing to do with fertility. Because I think going into your 30s, if you haven't completed your family yet, knowing mm -hmm. the mental aspects of what may happen or what thoughts may come and be prepared for those would really get over a lot of the issues that women have emotionally 
and also allow them to do things so they never get to that point. And I think that's such an important thing. Um, I know that you specialize and have taken unbelievable care of some of my patients that come to you um, once they are pregnant. But just for people who are listening, generally speaking, what's the time period that people get in touch with you? What do you prefer? How do you like to do it? When do you think people get the most benefit out of this entire process with you? Um, I like to start with people as early as possible because I don't just do the birth. I like to support them through the whole entire pregnancy. And I feel the more supported they feel, the better they feel, the better their labor goes the better they feel afterwards, the better their baby within will feel. Um, the more I can, I just feel like it's better. Uh, the more I know them and the more they know me and we build this very deep relationship, which carries on into the birth. So they're not just going into the room with a stranger. They have this relationship with somebody who's solely there for them. Um, the nurses come and go. The doctor comes in at the end and catches the baby. But the doula is the one person who has you've had this relationship with you and that is your support system. Um, I usually, people usually start with me a lot of times before they get pregnant. Um, and then most of the time I get a picture of a pregnancy test, uh, like a home test. They're like, put me in your book for June. And, uh, you know, so I, that's when I usually start, but then I just had somebody book with me who's pregnant in December, but she took my class. So I already know her. So we, you know, so tell us a little bit about the class. I love that you're doing classes. Oh, uh, I, we should do a fertility one together. Oh my God. I would love to do that with you. Any we second, should. any, I am ready. Okay. But I'm not kidding though. We no, no, I'm not kidding about. at all. I would love to do that. I would love to do that like today if we could. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I created this program. It's called the mindful mom to be. It's a 12 week virtual program. And the first part of pregnancy, first part, what we do is we build a healthy foundation for both mama and baby to grow from. The second part, we work on the birth. The third part, we work on th postpartum. I have tons of experts come on. Um, so we do, they get emails packed with tons of information. Um, there's around 20 to 30 women in there. It's for women only. I mean, mom, you know, birthing people only. And, um, um, and I really create this sense of community. Uh, and it's just, you walk out of it. A lot of them walked out in very scared about birth or not connected to their pregnancy or their baby. And they walk out of it feeling very knowledgeable, very connected to the baby, ready to be a mom. They just, there's so much information. So I love that. Um, I also started just mentoring a bunch of new doulas. So I have a new doula mentorship program. And oh, then I have- great. Yeah, I love it. And then I have a class um, for new mamas for the first year after birth, which I think is, you know, it's all virtual. And like you said, I agree with you. I love, I've always worked from people from home because I feel like they're the most comfortable in their own home. And I really get to see who they are at home. So you can all do all these at the comfort of your home, which I think is really important. I think that's great. I didn't know that you had all these additional things that you're doing now. I love the fact because there are not enough people like yourself, especially around the country. We're lucky. We live in LA and there's a lot of resources. Um, there's no Lori Bregman, but there's you and I'm glad that you do what you do. But I love the fact that you do this for the year after. I think that's probably the toughest year. People think that the year of struggling through fertility is hard. The year of pregnancy is hard. But I got to tell you something, the life changes that come along with a baby in your life now is huge from nutritional aspects, the emotional aspects, the physical aspects. I wanted to talk a little bit about the actually some dietary nutritional aspects of what you think are great for someone trying to conceive. Um, there are so many myths out there about what to eat and what not to do. And I know you know a lot of those and really which one's helpful, but do you mind if we talk a little bit about the things that people should do in preparation for being pregnant and right when they're coming to me and what we should do? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I have my fertility smoothie blend um, called Seed Life, and it's full of tons and tons of supplements that really help balance out the hormones and nourish the reproductive organs. And we just came out with a male fertility blend, which, oh my God, have you read the book Countdown? I have not. Okay. I am going to send you a copy. It's uh, all about male fertility and how it's declining like crazy. 
well, I know the fact that it's declining like crazy, and I read a lot of the research, a lot, and the fact that in the last 18 years of doing this, the number of issues that fall on the male side have increased more and more and more um, are really shocking, and I think people are beginning to catch this. We have been promoting men to freeze their sperm for years. It is something that is not catching up and is not catching on like egg freezing is. You know, lots of our patients are doing the egg freezing. Men just feel... It's not going to happen to me. I'm going to have perfect sperm, and I have perfect sperm for the rest of my life. So I think it's a really, really, really good, important thing to talk about. But I'd love to see the ingredients, and I'd love to see what it is. I know that your female blend is amazing. Um, for yeah. people that are listening, I think it's important to understand seeds have a lot of omegas and have a lot of benefits in them and nutrients and things that are really good for you. Um, and we want your body to be as strong and well-prepared before getting pregnant. And I think the idea of taking a supplement that just adds things to your body that you don't normally just ingest and have as your normal diet is really important. Um, and I do think that preparing your body and preparing your womb and preparing yourself for pregnancy is a really important process of being pregnant. And I know that you do a lot of things for people after they deliver as well. Mm -hmm. I think, like you said, I think the healthier you are before you get pregnant, the healthier your pregnancy will be. Um, and it's like, you know, you think about a gardener who gets ready to plant this beautiful garden or plant this seed, this precious seed, you want the, the, the environment to be as fertile as possible. So food is definitely, you know, the cleaner you eat. I'm not big into um, major deep cleanses before you try to conceive as, because I don't think it's good to start going into a fertility treatment depleted. Yeah. But I am into like nourishing your body with good, healthy foods, um, Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic believes that um, warmer the foods are, like the the more fertile the environment. So you know, soups and bone broths and stews and cooked salmon and you know vegetables and all those things. I think are really important as it, far as food goes. We were having this discussion today with um, our in-house acupuncturist, who's really amazing. I love the fact that you said warm. You need to warm and prepare your womb for implantation. We're not referring to the temperature. So there's a lot of foods out there that are cold and warm um, and hot, whatever you want to call them, um, cool and warm. Um, it has to do with getting your body in preparation for not necessarily the temperature of being warm, but warmth in terms of getting your body regular. Uh, and aware of what's going to happen and ready for pregnancy and implantation. The Asian cultures all understand this concept, and so do the Middle Eastern concepts. It's beginning to get going a little bit in the Western concepts, but it's very hard for people to understand. So like having a ton of salads and having a, a ton of fruits and vegetables and things that are raw don't necessarily put you into that warm state. Um, I tell everyone to have like a handful of walnuts a day, a few dates a day. The things that you said are all perfect, the bone broth, things that have, like things that like my Grandmother used to have on a daily basis part of her, her diet and soups and foods that are, have warming things in it. Um, I think it's definitely worthwhile to talk to someone like Lori or an acupuncturist that understands that. I think some people also call it the yin and the yang of foods and understanding which foods are better for you and get your body prepared rather than make it difficult and make a hostile environment for implantation. I also love that you have an in-house acupuncturist because uh, – I'm a big fan of acupuncture for fertility and during pregnancy and afterwards to help balance out the hormones. Um, so it's, I, and then anybody who does a fertility treatment or is struggling with infertility, I am like the first thing I'm like, you need to go get acupuncture. I love so. acupuncture. And I'm going to be really honest right here before I did acupuncture and before my wife and I needed to do IVF to have our second and third kids, which are part of our twins. Um, I, used to tell people to do acupuncture, but to be really honest, I didn't really know what I was telling people to do, and nor did I really 100% believe it. When I went to acupuncture, the first time I went, and within 30 minutes, I was completely reset. I fell asleep laying there with needles in me in my underwear, and I felt amazing when I woke up. I mean, like, this was an unbelievable game changer for me, and I love it. We... 
I have been very fortunate to have a handful of acupuncturists in my life from the time that I started my career. And now we have an unbelievable acupuncturist in my practice who's there full time working with my patients. And she's absolutely lovely. The people that have crossed my path have really changed, I think, the way that I think about acupuncture and changed the lives of some of my patients um, because many of them, like myself, have fallen in love with it. And for those of you who have not done it, it's definitely something that you need to see if it's right for you. I, I do tell my my patients, if you go in and you come out and you don't feel reset and you don't feel good about it, then you're either with the wrong acupuncturist or maybe it's just not right for you. But for those of you who walk in and feel reset and energized and wow, what just happened to me? I have no idea. That's the perfect thing to do to bring down all of the adrenaline that's running through our bodies like crazy and it's totally unnecessary and unneeded for pregnancy. I also heard, I don't know where I saw it. It was in, I don't know if it's in your office or somebody's office or a, a acupuncturist told me this, but when you combined it with fertility, like in vitro, it, it ups the chances like 40% or something like that. Well, I would love to believe that it takes it up by 40%. <laughs> something like uh, that. I so read it somewhere. I know for a fact that getting your body into a state of more zen and just calmer can help you. I don't know, It's I, I'm not sure if it's possible to put a percentage on that, to be honest. But it's one of those things that definitely, if it feels right and it feels good for you, it's definitely one of those things that I, I really, really do believe. Um, it's a great thing to do and you should do it. Um, for some people, like the financial budgetary restrictions of doing it are so big that I tell my patients, okay, you're not going to stress yourself. You're going to do something that's going to be accessible to you and doable. And many insurance plans now cover it, which I'm absolutely loving. Um, so that's actually a great thing. And thank God, you know, many of these nutrition, these uh, insurance plans are kind of just accommodating more and becoming much, much better when it comes to all kinds of fertility. Does insurance in any way cover what you do, Lori? It doesn't. I've had some people say, can I put this through insurance? And, and I was like, I'll write like a, a, like a receipt and say, you can try to turn it in and see some, I mean, some people have gotten it covered by their work. Um, wow. I think that's something that everybody's trying to work on right now to get it covered by insurance. That'd be great. I mean, it's, I know. Do, you know, do you know that in Asia they have these special clinics, not a clinic, yeah. it's a, a special place you go for moms that deliver. They go for six weeks, about 40 days where they take care of you and do everything for you. So you are relaxed as could be, and they're helping you with breastfeeding, with your baby, with everything. And I think that's the biggest, that is the biggest gift ever. And I, it's so sad that in our country, People deliver and they expect you to be back to life and back to normal and everything within a week. And it's just the most, uh, most unrealistic thing that you can ask of a mom that just delivered a baby. I see on, um, I always prep my girls, my clients. I'm always like, you, you know, block out that time. It's so important to take the time to heal after you have a baby. Um, they say if you don't properly heal, it can affect your your periods, your menopause, your your future pregnancies, and your overall vitality. And you're right. And as in America, we don't we're, we're a culture that doesn't really nurture the new mom. And um, my friend and I, one of my clients in New York, we were actually talking about opening a place like that in New York um, for moms, like they do in Asia. Um, but we never got it together because. We both, <laughs> I can't, in my spare time, I can't, but, um, but I completely agree with you. I think it's so important and it's something I see on Instagram where this new mom's like running around town and she's in her skinny jeans and she's just out and about doing stuff. And I, and, and I, I think people are like, look at you go girl. And it's more like, I'm like, oh, that's so sad to me. I'm like, oh, my heart breaks for, for them because they should be really home and being nurtured and resting and letting them, their bodies heal and bonding with their baby and, you know, not feeling the need that they have to go out and run around and do, do, do. I'm going to ask you a question that I don't think I've ever asked you. And I hope you're okay. Me asking you this, what do you think has given you such this unbelievable intuition to be able to help women through pregnancy through delivery and afterwards. And someone would say, oh, you know, I bet you Lori has like five kids. There's some special gift that you have, Lori, and I'm really curious where you got this from or how it came to you. So 
All right, I'll be, I'm going to kind of go a little deep here, but when I came, my mom's pregnancy with me and her birth, and for the first couple of years afterwards, um, what, I came into the world being imprinted by that experience. Um, and it wasn't a positive experience. And everything I did, every choice I made was from this place of the wound, the, the, the prenatal wound. And um, through, I did a lot of healing work on myself. And during that time, I got hypnotized and I was back in the womb and I realized I didn't feel good in there. I knew nothing about my birth story or my mom's pregnancy with me. And then I asked my mom and she told me all this stuff. And I was always drawn and I did a lot of healing work on it. And I was always drawn to working with pregnancy women, but I couldn't figure out where it came from. And right now I'm also taking a pre and postnatal and birth psychology program. And it talks about this constantly. And so I really feel that I came into the world. Had I not come into the world that way, I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing. And so I really true believe that it was my soul calling, um, that it was perfect the way it unfolded um, because I was a child of somebody who was not supported, somebody who didn't take care of themselves. Um, and my mission in life is that no one should ever have that experience because we all know the better the mama feels, the better the baby feels, and you're one unit when you're pregnant, and, and everything that you feel, your child's feeling within. And that goes for the imprint at birth and, and, you know, for the first year or two after. And I feel so strongly about this more than ever that babies, our world's crazy right now. And our children, they need to come in very solid and strong. They don't, in, in, in yoga, there's a, you know, the energy channels, the root chakra, the first chakra is about, you know, feeling solid um, and secure and, um, and grounded. And, you know, you have the stable foundation to grow from. And it's like a tree, right? If they're really rooted, they'll be able to withstand the storms and, you know, I think more than ever that children really need to come into the world very rooted in their being um, and with consciousness and awareness by the parents. Wow. That's, I'm so glad I asked that question. I was just sitting here and it suddenly came into my head. I have really wanted to know the answer to that. And I love it. I, um, you know, good for you for doing enough research and in yourself and inside yourself to try to figure that out and to understand where that came from. I'm glad, you know, I was going to, I was expecting a really good answer and that's a beautiful one. And I knew from you, I'm not going to get like, oh, I don't know. I just liked it. I just, I, I knew there was going to be a deep rooted understanding of why this was the right thing for you in your life. And boy, it's the right thing in your life. Um, the energy that you bring to the, and the positivity that you bring um, to people is really hu huge. Are there any specific um, exercises that you do with your patients that are trying to get pregnant that maybe mentally put them in a better place to get pregnant? One of the things I do is I have them open a window of, of time. So like, think about this. If somebody's coming to you and they're like, I've got to get pregnant. Like this is, it's, it, this is the end all be all this one time. Um, it puts so much pressure on them. So what I try to do is open a window and, and what it might be is maybe for, for six months, maybe you start with IU, IUI and acupuncture. And then if that doesn't work, you close the window and then you move to IVF and maybe you do, you, you give yourself three tries. I mean, I don't know how you sell your packages, but I know a lot of people do three in one because it, I, I think that also takes the pressure off because then you're like, if that doesn't work, there's always another. Um, and then you close the windows and you keep opening these windows and, and you really, some people are like, I'm going to try for a year. Uh, and you, the, it just, when you do that, it takes that pressure off that one time. So that's something I try to do a lot of self care, um, practices with these people. Um, I do a lot of practices with the couple and, and, you know, not making it about baby. If they're trying to just have sex 
you know, with making a baby naturally, um, not making it about making a baby, but making it about connection. <laughs> that um, is so true because patients of mine, sex is now a job. It's not pleasurable and they hate to have sex when it's getting time to having a baby. Um, but it's very important the, the way that you're describing it to make sure that you have complete control over your body, mentally, physically, and preparing yourself. And I think that it's important for us to all kind of give some, ad to address that and to not just ignore it because it's such a huge part of ourselves as human beings. Mm -hmm. Even think about the energy. Is that the way you want to bring the baby into the world? Like, hurry up, let's do this. And it's not fun for anybody, but like to actually bring the baby into the world in a different way. And even if they're going in for in vitro IVF, I'm always like, spend some time in bed cuddling before you go in. Um, if you, I even tell people to have an orgasm, right? Uh, because it opens up the energy channel in, um, before going in, um, you know, but getting that, the cuddling and the kissing and the, and the, and the connection, even just telling each other what you're grateful for about each other and having a couple moments of looking into each other's eyes and just having that time gets the oxytocin going, which, you know, it's a love hormone that makes everything feel good. And, and you, otherwise it's just, you know, it can be so medical and you really want to integrate some of the other stuff in. And, and so, so much of the emotional aspect and the pleasure of life and companionship is wiped out of people that have been going through fertility. So I don't want to ever, ever, you know, discount that and think that we don't address that because it's become a huge part of my practice. Um, I personally have gone out of my way to make sure that our patients are addressed physically and mentally because I realize it's an area that people are really struggling with during the time that they're um, under my care. I, I really loved how you said you had to come into this world, I think, in solid manner right now because our world is in such a crazy place. Um, and I love the fact that you've addressed because so many people ignore the fact that the mom and the baby are two completely separate beings and completely separate in the world and have nothing to do with each other. It's one. Your child is a part of you growing inside of you. So if you're depressed or if you're treating your body bad or you're treating your mind and emotional aspect bad, that pours over into this growing human being that's inside of you. And that's so important for people to address. And it's so crazy. So now that I'm taking this prenatal psychology, it's I'm like, I, can't, I devour everything. I mean, you should see me every morning. I get up at five in the morning and I can't wait to read because I'm just fascinated because I was that child. So it's like for me... I can't get enough of it, but they feel everything. And there's accounts like people, it's like amazing what we, we think of them as unfeeling human beings because their brain's not completely developed, but there is a consciousness that's going on way before that anybody knows and they're absorbing feeling and they, they know there's an innate knowing. So um, if you, we all have stressful days, um, I, this came up in my mindful mom to be and the doula training that we all have stressful days. And sometimes there's a lot of stress, especially right now with COVID, but to just put your hands on your belly and just talk to your baby and just say, this has nothing to do with you. You know, I'm just having a day. They'll feel that. Um, and, you know, that's not going to affect the baby having a stressful day or a week or whatever. But what does is if you live in a chronic state of extreme stress and anxiety, babies get flooded with stress hormones and cortisol, and they tend to be more stressful people. Um, I have seen that. I've seen that with my own two eyes. Moms that are really calm have children that are much, much calmer than others who were nervous Nellies while they were pregnant. Mm -hmm. And, and that's you must really see important. so many, I mean, and I see them too. I know when people are going through fertility treatments, they're so, they're, they're, the anxiety is so high because they've worked so hard to get pregnant or they've had loss. And it's like, you know, and it's, again, putting that hand on the belly and just saying, I just want you so badly. And I'm just so excited that this has nothing to do with you. It just changes the consciousness, the energy. You know, one of the things that I like to do is after my patients get pregnant, I like to see them weekly until they hit 10 weeks. And 
I, I know that there's a lot of other doctors that bring a patient back like once every two or three weeks just to make sure their hormones are fine and that the baby's mm -hmm. growing and then they say graduation and you're off. I like to bring them back weekly because I like to celebrate with them. I like mm -hmm. to celebrate everything they went through to get to that point and the fact that they have a beautiful baby inside of them and I want them to have that opportunity of glowing and forgetting about everything it took to get there because when they leave my office between 10 to 12 weeks, I want them to go out of their confident and really happy and really proud of what they did to get to that point. Um, and that's probably my absolute favorite part of my entire process when I start with the patient. One is the first time I talk to them because I love learning about what's going on and putting a plan of hope together that's really gonna help someone. And then I love to just see what the, when they leave those last couple of weeks, just how they change from all of the bumps in the road and all of the ups and downs we had and where they are at that time. So that's kind of a very special time and a very strong bonding time that I get to have with my patients. Yeah, I bet. It must be so rewarding to like... It's beyond rewarding. And then you get to inherit them full time and take really good care of them and have a really wonderful time with them. I get to be there for the the, the baby's entrance to the world, which oh, is that's so lovely. Know, yeah, well, amazing. I am distracted by the idea of the the webinar or virtual class I'm gonna be a part of with you and how we're gonna put it together for fertility. I am beyond excited to do that. I would love to bring a lot of what I can to the table and you bring what you have and we're gonna start working on this right away because I'm really excited okay. to do it, really am. I think it'd be awesome. I think, I think we have something really cool. Oh, and I think we have to bring some really good energy and some good people to the group and I, and I think between you and I, we know some really amazing uh, people that could be involved in that. I always, love talking to you, whether it's at dinner or whether it's here or uh, you're this the best. And thank you so much for bringing so much to the table, for helping so many people. Um, I would love for you to kind of give a shout out to yourself. And so everyone knows where to find you and how to get in touch with you and how to do all these classes that you're doing. Oh, thank you. I, it's always great talking to you and I miss you. I want to see you and your, your wife soon. Thank you. We would Didn't love to see COVID. you. Um, you can find me at lauriebregman.com, L-O-R-I-B-R-E-G-M-A-N.com, or I'm on Instagram at lbreggy, at L-B-R-E-G-G-Y. Um, yeah, that's Wonderful. where you can find me. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you again real soon. Me and too. thank and you, everybody. For of course, me. thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you, everybody, for listening today. Have a great day. Bye.